just my little first little basket and they incorporated the colors and you could tell in the bottom part as I was you know just learning that it was all sloppy then it got neater as I got to the end of it after I got the hang of it but yeah it's just my little first little basket <laughs> I'm Elizabeth Peterson. I was born and raised on Kodiak Island. I've lived here in Anchorage now for the last uh, nine years. There was a group of us that went over to St. Petersburg, Russia. Six ladies that was sponsored by the Kodiak Alutic Museum and uh, Kodiak Incorporated. Well, with the Museum of Anthropology and Ethnography and the Russian Ethnographic Museum. There's two different museums that have collections. Um, they have the earliest collection of baskets, both grass, spruce root, uh, from Kodiak in the world. When they brought out the baskets that were stored in boxes, when they start taking them out of each other, it was, oh my goodness, look at all those beautiful baskets. Being held for a hundred years or so, they were in such great shape still. They were just beautiful. Having access to the collections to be able to understand them is extremely important for us to, to look at and compare with the archaeological collections, compare with ethnographic collections, and then compare with what artisans, mainly women, are doing today. I want to know what they used for color, and when I got one up close, I looked at it, and I was amazed that it was just yarn, and the colors were just bright and beautiful, as if they were just made yesterday. That's the it. basket I saw in Russia was maybe about this big around, about the size of a coffee can. Gonna have the pretty little dots all around it with the open weave in it. I just decided to do a smaller version of it. I'd have a wet cloth by me to keep the grass damp because when it, it's not damp, it tends to dry out and gets brittle and break. So you always have to keep this damp all the time and then just start doing the weaving and incorporate the colors into it. And sometimes I can weave without watching as long as I know where I'm at. But my mom tried to teach me when I was young a young girl when I was 13, 14. I tried a couple of weaves and I said, this is not not what I wanted to do. So I never got back into it, never got interested in it. And then I, a couple of years ago, I realized that, wow, nobody back home does any more basket weaving. The artist died off back home. So when the class came up at the Heritage Center, I got her a scholarship from the Cognac Education Foundation and went and take the class and I was so glad I did just to keep the tradition going. We were teaching the museum ladies over at Russia how to basket weave also. We did a class there teaching the kids how to basket weave. They were just excited to learn. <laughs> they, they wanted to get their hands right into it. They had us on Russian news over there. Sven was able to get it off of YouTube. We made Russian YouTube. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm weaving, I could just, I go back into time and I could just imagine, you know, the lady sitting around telling stories, weaving. I mean, I'm back in time with them when I do this kind of work. <laughs> and this is a traditional basket made out of the beach grass. The colors were just glossy and pretty and beautiful compared to the raffia. And this is another one, just real tight weave basket that I experimented and tried and I painted these little whales on there which came out really nice. This one is made with thread weaved in. It's been about two and a half years I've been basket weaving. I started January of 2009 and I've made well over 20 baskets already. This one is just a traditional basket that I made out of raffia, non-traditional material. 
This is just another little basket with no colors in it. 